Now we're going to look at some fun buoyancy toys. Starting with this Cartesian diver. With the Cartesian diver, we start with a closed container. And we fill it with some water. Or in this case, water with a little fluorescein for a little pop of color. Then we'll put in a container made of a material that is denser than water. So, if it's completely filled with water, it'll sink. But if it's turned upside down, so it can catch some air, most of its volume will be air. So, it'll float. But, if we squeeze the container and increase the pressure on the inside, the water level in the container will rise. For a gas, if we increase the pressure while maintaining the temperature and number, volume has to go down. Since air is no longer displacing most of this volume of water, the force of buoyancy has decreased a lot, and it'll drop again. If you release the pressure, the volume of air expands, and it rises. You can, of course, calculate this more precisely. We can approximate the walls of our container to be approximately volumeless compared to the volume of air. And since liquids have about a thousand times the density of air, we can approximate the weight of the air to be zero. So the force of buoyancy on the container is density of water times gravity times volume of air. The volume is going to be nRT over P. I'm just going to call nRT some constant C. So whether or not it floats or sinks depends on if the buoyant force offsets the weight of the jar, which depends on the density of the water, how much gas we have, the temperature, and the mass of the jar. When I squeeze it, the little bottle drops down, and when I release, it rises back up. Here we have a Galileo thermometer. It's filled with a clear fluid that expands as it gets hotter, which means its density is temperature dependent. Inside it are a series of bulbs, and each bulb has a slightly different density. Now the density of the bulbs is not temperature dependent, at least not nearly as much as the fluid. So if each bulb has a constant density, we can label them at the temperature at which their density matches the density of the liquid on the inside. In other words, the innermost bulb tells us what temperature it is. Right now it's 74 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Now to show this in action, we could just wait however long it'll take for the temperature in the room to change, but it'll be a little bit quicker to hit it with a blow dryer. Right now, the bobs are sitting at all different levels because I hit it with a concentrated blast of hot air. So the temperature throughout is not equilibrated. And here we have a good old fashioned lava lamp. It's filled with another clear water-like fluid. In this case, the water stays approximately the same density. It's filled with a wax material that's heavier than water at room temperature, but lighter than water when it gets warm. So when we start, it's resting on the bottom, where there just happens to be a heating element that heats it up. It gets warm, loses its density, and rises to the top, where it's exposed to something closer to room temperature. There, it's able to cool down, and it drops back down. And so the cycle repeats.